Hi, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over hyperlinks for a web page. Hyperlinks are a pretty easy topic, but they're probably one of the most important things you're going to do on a web page, because why make a web page if you're not going to link to other pages and things like that? So if you're making a multi-page website, they're very critical. So I've got a blank web page started up here. Got the doc type definition for HTML5. Um, got an opening HTML tag. I have a head section, which contains my title element contains character encoding meta and also contains an author meta. The body section is blank but I do have uh, opening body tag, closing body tag, and my closing HTML tag. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to go right into the body of my page and create a headline one called hyperlinks. That'll be my main headline, main title for the page that's displayed. And let's make it really easy. Uh, let's see, how about if we just go ahead and create a little paragraph and this is a hyperlink in a paragraph. So I have a normal paragraph of text and I would like to create a hyperlink out of a particular word. Now a hyperlink is created with anchor tags. Okay, So opening anchor tag and a closing anchor tag. But an anchor tag doesn't work just by itself. You have to have an attribute in there. In particular, you have to have the hyper reference attribute. So href equals so the word hyperlink is going to be a hyperlink because it's surrounded by anchor tags, opening and closing. The href attribute is how you tell the browser where the person is going to go once they click on the hyperlinked text. So we have a couple choices here. I'm going to start off with what's called an absolute link, which is when you link to another website. There we go. So now the word hyperlink is going to be a hyperlink to the CNN website. And let's just make sure we can see this clearly. Okay. Whenever you want to link to a web page that is outside of your own domain, you need to put in an absolute URL, which is what I have right here. And in fact, often you'll see a slash right at the end of that too. So that is a complete URL. HTTP colon slash slash www.cnn.com. So I'm going to go ahead and control S to save. By the way, I do have my file saved. It's all lowercase, no spaces with a .html extension. Let me jump over to my browser. And I'm going to do, uh, I'm on Firefox here. I'll do control O. And I'm over on my desktop. So jump over to my desktop. There it is. There's my hyperlinks page. And this is what I have. There's my heading one, headline one. And there's my paragraph with a hyperlink text. Let me click on it. That'll take me over to CNN. Fantastic. Click my back button, and I'm back. So, really easy to make a basic hyperlink. Now, what if I want to link to another web page? So let's try this one out. I'm going to do a Control A to select all. Control C to copy. I'm going to make a new file, and I'll just paste, make a new page. I'm going to do a file, save as. And let's see, I'll save this to my desktop, and I'm going to call it page2.html. So I'll even make a couple changes up here. Hyperlinks page2. Hyperlinks page2. There we go. And just so this really stands out, I'm going to jump up to the head section of my uh, page, put in, uh, I'm sorry, not script. I want to put in some style. And let's see, I'll just do a body, background color, that's a code for yellow. Okay, so I'm going to save that. Now, I'm going to jump, and let's make this more specific. So this is a hyperlink to CNN. So my page 2 is going to have a hyperlink to CNN. Now this is my page one that I was at before. This is now going to be a hyperlink to page two. Now when you're linking to another page that's within your own domain or your own website, you don't put in an absolute URL. Instead, you just put in the file name for that page. So I could literally put in page2.html because that is the file name for the page I want to link to. So, I've got my hyperlinks page, which is what we're currently looking at. That has a hyperlink to page 2 in between the opening and closing anchor tags. My page 2 has a hyperlink to CNN, which is an absolute link. So we have a relative link 
and an absolute link. Let's test it out. So back over to my browser, I'm going to do a refresh. I see that now I have a hyperlink to page two. When I click it, that takes me to page two, and I now have a hyperlink to CNN. When I click it, it takes me on to CNN. So that's a little bit about basic hyperlinks. Now there's a couple more things I just want to share with you. Um, the basic anchor tag has to have the hyper reference attribute. There are a couple other attributes you can use. Um, let me just throw in one more. I'm going to go ahead and put in uh, a title attribute. Okay. Now the title attribute allows you a space to put in more information about the hyperlink. So as an example, this is a hyperlink that goes to page two. So the title might be, you know, return to page two. And the title attribute is really used to provide more text information to someone who needs it. Uh, someone who has a visual impairment, they may require or really come to rely on hyperlinks having this extra information, these titles. These aren't very common though, and I'm honestly not in the habit of using them a lot, but I am trying to get in the habit of using title attributes more in my anchor tags. So keep that in mind. So a title attribute can add some more information. Now there's a couple other hyperlinks that I want to share with you. Let's see, I'm on my hyperlinks page. I'm in a paragraph. I'm going to create another paragraph and um, send me a message. Okay, so I, now I have a paragraph, and I want to create this whole thing into a hyperlink. So I'm going to, of course, at the very beginning, I'll start off with an opening anchor tag, the end, closing anchor tag. So the entire sentence is going to be my hyperlink. Within the anchor tag, I'm going to do an href equals colon, I'm sorry, quotation, mail to, colon, and then I'll put in an email address. So username at domain.com. There we go. So that's how you do a hyperlink to email. Mail to colon and then the email address. So I'm going to save this. Browse back to my web or jump over to my web page, refresh, and there's a hyperlink to an email. Now, I'm not going to click it because if you do, that'll trigger your local email program and it'll compose a, start to compose an email to that recipient. Now I'm not a big fan of doing email hyperlinks. I don't think it's a very professional way to go for a lot of websites. Maybe for a smaller website, it's fine. Um, I'm a much bigger fan of contact forms, which um, you use, you know, using form elements for a web page, and then of course you can use a little bit of PHP scripting to have it send over to your email. So it's a little bit more professional to go with a contact form as opposed to a straightforward email hyperlink. But in case you need to do one, there you go. And let's see, let's see if we can't do another one. How about paragraph? with um, jump to the bottom of this page. Okay, this is going to be kind of a weird one here. Um, jump to the bottom of this page and then I'll have at the bottom of my page, how about if I have a little headline too? You're at the bottom. Okay, what I want to do here is I want to create an in the page link. Okay, this is kind of interesting. So I want to jump to the bottom of the page. Now to make this a little bit more realistic, I'm going to put an inline style right here. I'll do a margin bottom, 400 pixels. Okay, so let's see what I've just done. Back over to the browser. Okay, so notice I've got a page and then there's all my text, but if I scroll down, there's the bottom. Okay, let's see. I'm going to do one more quick thing here. I'm going to make this a little bit more noticeable. I'll do an 800 pixels there, and I'm also going to do a, the same thing on this. Okay, so now my paragraph has a big bottom margin, and so does my heading. So you have to really have to scroll down to get to it. Okay, so. What I want to do now is to make sure that my target, where I want to go, has a unique ID. So I'm going to type in ID equals bottom of page. So I'm giving this headline to a unique ID so that I can refer to it with a hyperlink. Here's how it works. I'm going to make a hyperlink out of the words bottom of this page. And then for the href, 
the hyperreference href equals pound sign bottom of page quotation mark. So this is how you link to a specific element or specific yeah specific element on the exact same page that you're at. Let's try it out. So I'm going to save this, head back over to my browser and refresh. I see I have a link to bottom of this page. When I click it, it takes me to the bottom of the page. And then I can scroll back up to get back where I wanted to. Bottom of the page. Of course, I could also have a link that takes me back up to the top as long as there's an element that has that ID. So that can come in handy. Um, you don't use it too much though. Now you can also do something like this. I'm just going to do a little bit of a copy paste here. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go to my page two for a moment. Jump to the bottom. Let me write it like this. Jump to the bottom of my other page. Okay, so this is kind of weird. Now I'm on my page two and I'm creating a hyperlink. Oh, need my closing paragraph tag. I'm making a hyperlink that goes to the bottom of another page. Well, when you do that, it's still a relative hyperlink, so you have to put in the page name. My other page is CIS 195 week two hyperlinks dot html there we go so I'm linking to a specific file and then I'm linking to a specific section of that file kind of a weird way to do it but I'm gonna save this head back over to my page and refresh so I'll jump over to my page two and now I can say alright I'm gonna jump to the bottom of my other page this should take me to the bottom of the page with a white background. I'll click it. There we go. You're at the bottom. Scroll back up. Hyperlink back to page two. So a little bit more with hyperlinks. And I think there's one more thing I want to show you. Okay. Um, I'm on my page two. I'm going to do a paragraph. I'm going to insert an image. And I actually do have an image saved on my desktop here. Let me just kind of drag this over so I can see it. Uh, middle and south sister jpg okay Okay, so this is an image link, and let me put in my closing paragraph tag. So I've inserted an image into my page as normal, and let's make sure it's working. I'll just head back over to my browser. I'm on my page two, I'll refresh, and there's my picture. Cool. Back over here. Now to make it a hyperlink, you can treat it just like text. In fact, images are referred to as inline images because they're kind of like text. My image is in a paragraph just like my text is. It could be in a div or any other block element. But I'm going to put an opening anchor tag in front of the image, closing anchor tag after the image. Okay, and I'll just put this on a separate line for convenience. href equals http colon slash slash www dot uh, how about just go to flickr dot com okay so now my image is going to be a hyperlink to the Flickr website if I save this back over to my browser refresh now if I mouse over this photo notice that I get the little hyperlink hand cursor and if I click my photo it'll take me over to the Flickr okay so there we go so that's a lot with hyperlinks and we've got relative links which is when you link from one page to another page within your same domain. We've got absolute links, is when you link from one page to a completely different website. We've got target links, or um, in-page links. That's when you link right into a specific part of a page, either on the same page or a different page. And of course, you can make email links and links out of images. A little bit about hyperlinks for you.